Thanks for stopping by my channel, and I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are. Today I'm using the materials from the Palletful Packs box for May. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a card up for you to follow. It's definitely worth checking out, there's a surprise that you won't want to miss in it. But for those that have seen that video, I'm today taking on the Palletful Packs prompt challenge for May, and I'm doing week one jellyfish. But if you're any part of the art community or you have an interest in art, you probably also know that it's Mermay, the month where artists from all over the world draw a whole bunch of mermaids. So I couldn't resist but to combine the two. And so I've decided to create a character, the goddess Nidaria, queen of the jellyfish. She's a mermaid and part jellyfish the goddess actually responsible for creating all jellyfish, and she's the reason why they have their deadly sting. She gave them a protection so that they would have a way to roam through the oceans, float through the oceans, and survive. I'm really happy with how this piece turned out for a range of reasons. Uh, firstly, I didn't use any references as a challenge for myself. I think references are, are fine, and actually I use references all the time, and I think any good artist does, but I'm just wanting to try to practice more without them. And I like how the materials worked. You can see here I'm showing you the Marabou Aqua inks that were received in the box or at least seven of the eight of them, because the black didn't fit in this palette. I actually haven't touched it since when I first unboxed and did my color wheel test, and you can see that the inks have completely dried hard, like watercolor, and I wanna test if they'll actually be able to be reactivated when I get back to spraying some water on them, as if they were watercolors. But first, I'm using Holbein masking fluid or masking ink to just preserve the whites in a few areas where I want some bubbles to show. And then I've spritzed the small palette and I've taken my larger palette to transfer the ink into that and to make mixtures as I go along, especially because I want Nidaria to be light in color and same for the jellyfish, a lightness and a luminosity throughout most of them, especially for the jellyfish and the tentacles of Nidaria and her fins. And for the background, I really want to build up the contrast and darkness. And so hopefully it'll end up that the jellyfish and the goddess Nidaria are almost glowing in the dark depths of the ocean. Or at least that's my hope. Either way, I'm having fun exploring how these inks work. I got a few questions in my last video about the inks, so I'll do my best to talk to you about them. I remember one of the questions asked, do you really need these? Are they anything special other than, you know, compared to watercolors? And I would say that if you have a fine set of watercolors, you don't need these, but they are fun to play with. I think that there are some interesting slight differences to watercolour, and they definitely feel more like watercolour to me than they do to inks. Firstly, these are almost a milky, more sticky, thicker consistency when you're adding water to them, and so although they have some flow, the flow doesn't maybe go as crazy as it could with some other watercolours. And so maybe some people that are challenged by the flow of watercolor, like that's something I really love about watercolor, but I know especially beginners often really don't like that and feel out of control when the watercolors are flowing. Well, I think for these marabou inks, you've got a little bit more control when it comes to flow, but they still will move and they still will mix together and you can create some really lovely water-like effects or watercolor-like effects. They're also transparent, just like watercolors are, and so I really wanted to push them and test them in this piece to see how 
layers would work will you be able to still see through the layers will they build up a luminosity like watercolors do and i really feel that they do and that the layers although you can activate a little bit the layer below they generally stay quite still after you've let it dry for a little bit but if you want to scrub at an area and, and then press down with some tissue you can lift off and go to back to a lighter color and i also demonstrated that in my unboxing i also wanted to see how the watercolors mix together to form new colors mostly i did this to create a purple i do have a lovely purple or violet in the marabou aqua inks but that didn't come in the box so i just wanted to stick with the materials in the powerful packs box and it's really easy to mix as you can just see there your own colors and to get um, a real spectrum from the eight colors that are provided there really if you have this box you've got a complete art kit you don't need any other colors this medium itself would work just fine and you'll be able to create all sorts of beautiful pieces you can see me starting to put in some layers now and now you can start to see one of the the benefits of these that maybe would encourage you to get some of them in my opinion i think that they layer in a way that increases the brightness a little bit more than traditional watercolors do or at least faster they just really pack a punch with their vivid colors especially when you start to layer them up you can go in thick with them as well but i just don't think it is as pretty as if you use some light washes and build up layers one on top of the other it's part of my technique but also it's partly done on purpose that i'm leaving some areas that are blank on each layer so you can really see through different multiple layers and you can also see layers stacked on top of each other and i think it creates some really interesting watery effects but it also allows you to see how these inks are behaving and how they work the brushes that we received in this box are so perfect for the size of paper that we received as well i think powerful packs is just such an amazing subscription box because they really think things through and you know a normal subscription box for art materials you'd be lucky to get even one nice brush but here we've gotten two amazing brushes and the round is so perfect for doing smaller details and fine areas that i can even use it as a liner brush but i can also tackle some fairly large-ish areas but then you've got the flat brush to be able to take on you know fairly large areas and to really cover ground quite quickly as you can see i transfer back and forth between them especially when i'm doing the background and so for the tight nooks and crannies i'll use the round brush but to just lay down some color quickly i'll be using the flat and so those brushes are just so amazing and i can really understand now why they're called velvet touch they really the handles of these paint brushes really do feel so soft and almost velvety almost a little bit like rubber as well even though i think they're a wood but maybe with a varnish on it it's just such a lovely sensation to hold those brushes and of course i think all those materials work quite well on this strathmore mixed media paper personally i'd probably prefer to use these inks in the future on actual watercolor paper 100 cotton watercolor paper but this mixed media paper is fun it's just maybe a little bit too smooth for my liking and maybe a little bit too tricky for being able to do some of the techniques or lifting or blending that i like to do with watercolors i also like to work really wet into wet in areas and i'm just not sure that this mixed media paper is the best for that it can cope with it 
it just seems a little bit more of a struggle. And of course, we can't forget the fine liners that we received in this box as well. And I said in my unboxing, and I'll stick with it, that they're not my favorite, but they will do the job. And it is lovely that we got such a range from the 0.2 to the brush. I use the brush mainly for the real outlines of the, the Queen Idaria character. And then I start using progressively smaller and smaller nibs as I go into the inner sections and finer details um, using the 0.2 for her facial features and for some of the tentacles as well. And so that's pretty much it for this piece. I had so much fun with the box for May and I hope that you did too. I hope that you've been inspired by the prompts. I loved this jellyfish first prompt and of course it's been fun to do mermaid. This is actually only the second mermaid I can mermaid I can ever remember drawing and I feel like she's a real improvement from the first one that I did several years ago and it's been fun to create something for mermaid. I've already gotten some really lovely feedback on my Instagram channel. I often do sneak peeks at my Instagram. If you're interested in following me there, you can check my description for the link to it, but I'm also called A Art Adventure there. And I'd just love to hear from you in the comments below and maybe you have some questions about this piece or how the inks were working on this paper or just wanted to say hello and I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to also give me a like and subscribe if you are new here. And I'll see you guys soon for another art adventure. Take care.